Breaking out the old intro, Steven. How does that sound? <laughs> bring back any memories? I gotta put on my bell bottoms and bring <laughs> out my vinyl. <laughs> That's awesome. I was actually in the pre-show. We were going through uh, a whole bunch of the old uh, sounds in my soundboard app. Um, just some old uh, old tracks that I haven't played for a while, and I was like, "Wow, I haven't played this one in forever." So we had to start the show with it. So. That is like from like circa DS Life days, way back in the the first year or two, and we were doing it with uh, myself and Edgar. So that one's been been around for a while, Stephen. So anyway, let's get into the show. This is Nintendo Pulse Podcast, episode number forty three. As always, I'm your host Lloyd Hannison, and joining me, he's already talked, so you know who it is, Stephen Munn. Hi, I'm back. How's yeah. it going, Stephen? It's going pretty well. How's it going with you? You know, it's going pretty darn good. Um, we, we didn't end up doing a show last week um, for for some good reasons. Um, my wife had uh, had LASIK surgery last week on Wednesday, and she uh, um, had a bit of an issue with one eye, which basically swelled like crazy, and she could barely see out of it, and there was like crazy panic. Um, so I, I last week when I was supposed to be doing the show, I, instead I was putting five drops, five different types of drops in her eye, uh, multiple times per hour. <laughs> Some of them were multiple times per hour. Uh, one, others were once every hour. So I was a little bit uh, preoccupied, but uh, she's doing great now. I know great. a lot of you listeners um, used to listen to her back on the PSP podcast days way back a long time ago. And uh, she did some stuff for uh, for TOG, the Touch of Gaming as well. But uh, she's doing good. Her eyes are 20-20. Her left eye that had the problems is already getting... Uh, Already getting better and almost perfect. So uh, that's my explanation for missing a week. Uh, do apologize, and we hope not to do it again for uh, for quite some time. Great, but uh, yeah. Other than that, everything's great. My uh, my son Nick turning seven tomorrow. If you'd believe it. Wow. And I, I was just chatting with some listeners um, that listened way back in the PSP podcast when I first did that show, um, which was basically right around when I had uh, had Nick, like I just part way into the first year or whatever. And it's like, holy crap, I've been podcasting for as long as my son has been alive and longer even. it's uh, It's been a weird, weird hobby. Very, very strange hobby. Yeah, it's uh, it's been kind of your thing, you know, at least as long as I've known you. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the things that I've been doing, and I've been training people on it, and giving giving uh, presentations on doing video and stuff. It's been it's been a lot of fun. But uh, that's enough of that garbage. Let's get into the show, uh, Stephen. Let's. Uh, well, what's new with you? Have anything anything of of import happened over the last couple of weeks that you want to talk about before we uh, get into the guts of the show? Nothing that I can think about. Good. All right. Well, that's good because you didn't. Uh, that means you didn't move. You haven't become an astronaut fly to the moon um nope. anything like that so that's good that's good all right well let's get into the the meat of the show let's talk about uh, games we've been playing so steven once you start it off uh, tell us a little bit of what you've been playing lately on your uh, your gaming devices well we had some new releases on uh, 3ds virtual console recently and uh, i got castlevania for nes when that came to 3ds virtual console even though i promised myself that i would not rebuy anything that i bought on wii um, <laughs> on the 3DS Virtual Console. Uh, when Castlevania came out, I looked at it and said, I promise not to buy that, but I'm going to buy it right now. And then I went and I bought it. Let's just go, okay, it's okay to lie to yourself every once in a yeah. while, Steven. Yeah, and, and the 3DS Virtual Console is, is actually really cool because it has very easily used save states and stuff like that. So you can um, pick up exactly where you left off and stuff like that. Um the other one was uh, Castlevania The Adventure, which came out uh, a couple of months ago, I think, on Virtual Console. And uh, I played it and said, yep, this game is still terrible. And then I turned <laughs> it off. Uh, but then I came back to it uh, two days ago and played it for a little bit then and played it a little bit yesterday. And then I played it a little bit tonight and I just beat it. Nice. Um, but I don't think I could have beaten it without the save states because uh, at one point I, when I died and you know not even not even losing all my lives but just losing a life and it put me so far back in the stage <laughs> that i was just shocked 
I was absolutely shocked. <laughs> I was like, there is no way. There's absolutely no way. So then I loaded my my state and it got to the point where I was making a save state after every enemy I killed. Yeah. The the the, the joy of old video games. I can remember um playing a game. I can't remember what game it was on my Super Nintendo. Oh, I can't remember which one it was. Um I'm going to have to dig back. I think I posted a blog post about it a long time ago. And I was getting so frustrated because I was dying so often and not really making it anywhere. So I ended up um, finding the ROM for the game and loading it up in an emulator and playing it so that I could do the same thing that you're doing, save save states whenever I would almost die. And it ended up beating the game. I didn't actually beat it on the console that I owned the game for. I beat it on an emulator um, yeah. with, with a ROM. It's just like, it's, it's so crazy. But uh, but yeah, that's that's how it was back in the day. Some games were just so impossible, like the original like TMNT for NES, which is an incredibly hard game. Um, yeah. But I know people that have beaten it, and they're proud of the fact. Sure. <coughs> Wet, and and I know, would I, I didn't have any patience back then, and I still don't. So yeah, I mean the the original Castlevania and, and Castlevania Two and Castlevania Three, I beat all those on their original platforms, and most of the Castlevania games I beat on their original platforms. But these. These Game Boy games, the three Game Boy games in particular, are very challenging. Um, I got all the way to Dracula in Belmont's Revenge, which is the second one. And I got all the way to Dracula in Legends, which is the third Game Boy one. But the first one was this one, and this is the one with like the ridiculous jumps where you have to be pixel perfect on the jumps or you fall to your death. And then you have to start the stage over at the very beginning. It's like extremely extremely cruel and cheap and then you have weird enemy spawns you'll have enemies that will spawn in random places for some reason and um they'll behave in erratic ways and the and the very very uh precise controls like not not in a good way but like you you have to jump and whip at exactly the right instant to catch it depending on where it's flying through the air or whatever and then it, it moves in a different direction that you don't expect because it's just random, you know, very, very, very difficult, uh, very difficult game. Um, and feels like it was designed this hard just to compensate for the fact that it had to be so short yeah, they, on that platform. If you didn't have those jumps, it would be a 30 minute game, but uh, they made yeah. it more difficult. So you'd spend a little bit more time and, and feel feel like you got your money's worth uh, on the game. <laughs> or or like you wanted to snap the cartridge in half a <laughs> little, um, little of both a little from column a column a, a column a i can't speak apparently a little from sure. column b uh fun fun stuff so outside of those two um i've put, i've been playing uh you know still more puzzle swap and find me too on um my 3ds nice uh, yeah i i have completed pretty much every puzzle now and oh wow yeah the only ones i'm missing i'm missing some pink pieces on the luigi's mansion puzzle right um and i'm missing one pink piece on brain age but um a guy who i work with who i tag every day who's at our convention this week texted me this afternoon to say i got it from someone who was at the convention <laughs> <laughs> we're like a team you know it's that's like hilarious he's got, yeah he's got two 3ds's he brings to work wow. um and i've got two that i bring to work i bring mine and my daughter's and uh i have another friend at work who brings two to work his and his fiance's so every day we get you know six or seven <clears throat> level seven tags every day of the week so yeah so it all works out really really well wow. and i have pretty much all the hats now i just got the famicom hat and uh well i'm, I'm a little bit jealous um i gotta be uh gotta be honest with you i i just opened up my puzzle swap and i have uh, th uh 324 pieces out of the 609 that are available so i i'm I still missing got, uh nine pieces i think oh i still got quite a ways to go um, and I meet people because I, I, I've said in the past on the podcast, I work at a university. So, um, mm -hmm. if I have it with me and I walk around campus, I usually get like a, a 10, um, street pass hits. If I, if I walk through like the main university center, uh, area, cool. um, Very but, cool. but even then, I mean, I, I don't work in that building anymore, so it's not something I do every day and it's still taking me forever to get all of them. And I'm lately, I've been meeting a lot of new people that don't have any of the older puzzles. They just have the newer ones, but they have all pieces that I have. So it's been, it's been really annoying i have to go to like yeah. a comic-con or something and and just like street pass a couple hundred people um over 
over a period of days and uh, get a lot of those pieces would be would be a lot of fun. I'll tag people during my commute home. Um, I hit people on the bus. It, be first time tags and stuff. Yeah, I hit people on the bus every once in a while, and I don't take the bus, but they're in a bus, and I'm driving by the bus, and I somehow street pass them as I'm passing yeah. by them, which just I don't understand how that even works. That's happened with me on uh, school buses too, it's where I'll be driving behind a school bus in the morning, and I'll get tags from the kids on the school bus. <laughs> it's um, so bizarre. Yeah, it's amazing how the range is only supposed to be so much, but I've seen it tag across much greater distances. Um, Jeremy Parrish, uh, formerly of 1UP, uh, host of the Retronauts podcast, he recently tw- he tweeted, I think yesterday, that one of his interesting discoveries this week was that if he charges his 3DS in the living room, he gets tags from the passing train, the train that passes <laughs> by his apartment. That's hilarious. Yeah, how cool is that? You know, you just just sit it there charging and build up the tag. He and... he built a cantenna that he attaches on the outside of his, his building <laughs> to extend his his wire wireless signal a little bit further. That's, and my first thought that's was awesome. that's awesome. My second thought was how close must that train be passing <laughs> to his apartment? He actually lives under one of the uh, one of the one of the benches in the uh, station. Yeah, so. yeah, that's uh, that's after being laid off by one up. That's yeah. how it happens. Uh, yikes! 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 Yeah. Yikes! Ah, oh, cool. Sounds like you've been playing a lot of stuff. That's good. Mm-hmm. And Terraria. Um, Still playing that. Dropped another ten hours into Terraria this week. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Uh, well, I've been playing a little bit. Um, not so much on Nintendo platforms. Um, I've been playing Luigi's Mansion here and there. It's kind of my, um, it's kind of like my palate cleanser. Um, I'll play a game and then I want to switch to another one, so I'll play a little bit of Luigi's Mansion and then go back uh, onto whatever the new game I want to play is. Um, so I've been playing that. Um, still enjoying it. Um, still really loving it. Still thinking it's better than the first one, uh, but I haven't beaten it yet. So. I, I still got a still got a ways to go before I've actually completed all of the towers. So I'm really looking forward to, or all of the mansions rather. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I did pick up a new game this week uh, called uh, Guacamelee on. Uh, it's on PlayStation Network. It's, that looks really cool. Oh, it is so good. Um, it's a cross buy title, so it's fifteen dollars, and you could play it on your play, PlayStation Three or your Vita. Um, <clears throat> I've been playing it on Vita, and it's essentially a, a luchador themed um, metroidvania kind of game so it's a side-scrolling action adventure game where you learn powers by learning um, wrestling moves that allow you to get further and do different things and it has this really cool um, <clears throat> mechanic where you can switch between the land of the living and the land of the dead because it's the uh, it's the uh, festival of the dead is happening and this demon is trying to merge both of the the universes together and yada 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 but it is such a great game um, the art style is amazing. It um, it has all these like nods to different gaming culture bits and different memes. Um, I found the secret room, and when I got into it, there was this huge QR code, so I scanned it, and I scanned it on my phone. Um, and um, I'm gonna go go into it, um, talk about some of the other memes as it's loading, but. Um, it has things like posters for Super Mario Brothers, but it's Los Hermanos Plumbers, um, and it's uh, and it has some redone versions of of Mario and Luigi and stuff. Um, Mega so yeah, Ombre. Y- yeah, Mega Ombre as well, and they have like um, Castle Crashers, but I can't remember what it was, but it was like the redone heads for Castle Cra- Castle Crashers. Um, you get your powers by smashing. I remember in Metroid those little bird things that hold the little orb. What are they Chozo called? Statues. Chozos. That's right. They're called something very similar in this game. I can't remember what they're called, but they look the same. They're just huge. And when you break one, this goat comes running out, and then the goat turns into a person, and he gets really pissed off that you're breaking all of his statues, but he gives you power anyway. <laughs> and it's just, it's so tongue in cheek, so awesome. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, here we go. I scanned the. That's right. <laughs> I'm not going to say that though. Um, they. I scanned the big QR code, and it says, "Congratulations, you successfully identified and scanned a QR code. Great job!" And then it has that in a bunch of different languages, and then it has the um, heart like less than three drink box studios. So it's just <laughs> like it, it just has like all this really like, really cool kind of pop culture kind of references and gaming references and just weird quirky things put into this game and it's it is so much fun so i'm i've been really enjoying that and that's actually been taking up most of my time when i've actually been gaming that and simpsons tapped out on my ipad i can't i can't stop playing that game it's such an addiction it's it's terrible i actually recommended that one uh, to someone recently who got an iphone it's so good Uh, 
on your endless praise of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's I, I'm a big Simpsons fan, and it's just I don't know. I, I used to play Farmville, um, and and be addicted to that, which was really sad, and I, I hate to admit it, it in a in a public forum like a podcast. Um, I'm personally shocked. Yeah, it's 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 terrible. Um, but yeah, I, I've been playing this one a lot and uh, really enjoying it. So. So yeah, so about the only Nintendo platform title I'm playing is Luigi's Mansion. So that's uh, that that's it. I'm looking forward to some of the games that are coming out in the near future. Um, the new Lego City uh, 3DS game, Lego City Undercover Chases Revenge or Chases Something, uh, will be coming out, uh, which is the prequel to the uh, Wii U title that I played the hell out of. Um, so I'm looking forward to that one as well. But um, yeah, that's about it. What do you say we get into the rest of the show, man? Okay. All right, let's start out um, as I like to do when new games are announced. Uh, Nintendo released new downloadable titles available for your Club Nintendo coins for the month of April. So um, from now until May 5th, uh, you can get Super Mario 64 on your Wii for 200 Nintendo Club Nintendo coins. You can get Super Metroid on the Wii for 150 um, Club Nintendo coins. And then on your Nintendo 3DS, you can get Kirby's Pinball Land, which is the uh, Game Boy title, for 150 and 3D Classics Urban Champion, which is one of the redone <laughs> 3D um, 3D versions of an old Nintendo title. So that one's 150 coins as well. So um, if you have a lot of coins, you might want to spend them on a game. And there you go. There's some some good titles and for you to check out. Anything but Urban Champion. Yeah, I I've, I've, that's I think that's the only 3D Classics one I don't own, <laughs> and I don't have any <laughs> intention on on actually buying it. So wah wah. Um. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on. I'm just trying to get wait for this page to load. Um, so if you're not downloading free games, how about uh, magazines? Um, I I talked a lot about um, Nintendo Force <clears throat> when uh, when it was announced as kind of the spiritual successor to Nintendo Power. I uh, really dug it and uh, talked a lot about it on on both the bonus stage and this one. Uh, I was contacted recently by the, um, I guess, the, the the lead editor for Pure Nintendo Magazine, or PNM, which is another kind of uh, independent Nintendo magazine. And it's available at uh, purenintendo.com slash magazine. I, I let them know that I would uh, mention it on the show. So if you want to check it out, um, it's available. Um, I'll open my issue. Or I'll read it. <clears throat> And this one's kind of cool because it is available as a uh, a digital subscription or a, sorry a, a physical subscription, but you can also get a digital version that you can read on your iPad using their great little iPad app. So it has an iPad and Android app that you can use, um, or you can um, get a, a physical version sent to you. Uh, the di- the digital subscription is ten dollars, and they're they're um, bi monthly, so you'll get six episodes for ten bucks or six issues rather for ten bucks. And yeah, it's a, it's a really great magazine. I've been reading through it and really enjoying it um it's got these like cool sliding pages so you can see the kind of the um the uh super mario brothers uh thing and you slide up and up goes the the little thing and you get all the arts in it <laughs> and it tells about the p-wing and all that other stuff really cool yeah it is kind of cool um they do another another thing in one of their pages where they have games built into the magazine where you can do pixel puzzles which are kind of like picross um and they give you all of the the, the, the things it's hard to show on my camera but all the little things that you fill in and you do like a little picross to make little 8-bit titles and things like that so um yeah I've been really lucky, lo- loving it it's uh it's a pretty cool magazine and for ten dollars on your iPad um or f- on my iPad um it, it's been a worthy uh, a worthy purchase so um, I'm hoping to get an interview with the uh, the gentleman that contacted me. Hopefully, we can do that for uh, a future um, episode of the Nintendo Pulse um, podcast. Be cool to kind of get um, I don't know just a little interview done with someone that is doing something um, that's kind of cross media like this, sending out physical versions <laughs> worldwide. Um, that mu- the logistics behind that must be just absolutely uh, insane. Um, but uh, it'll probably make for a good conversation. So look for that in a future episode of the podcast. All right, um, we have some bad news. Um, a, a gaming network, uh, a website that's been around forever, basically is is dead. Uh, One Up, which was uh, around for a long time, uh, it was basically kind of the the web front end to EGM magazine way back in the day before EGM really had its own web presence. I mean, it did, but it 
wasn't great. Um, so one up was awesome. They had great podcasts. It was really awesome. And then they got sold and then everything kind of went downhill. They canceled all the podcasts, um, but it still existed its own little entity and it did pretty good for a while. Um, and then recently it was sold to Ziff Davis, who seems to be the killer of everything video game uh, and and technology. And uh, recently they just announced that they have um, basically shut it down. So IGN was uh, it was running alongside IGN for a long time. Um, everybody that worked on on one up was essentially let go and all of their uh, all of their other things other things so the the videos that they were doing the podcasts everything was just kind of shelved period and done yeah um, well a bunch of the people a few of the people from one up now work at ign like jeremy Parrish, for example works at ign now and uh i think there are a few other people who did that too yep but uh yeah it's yeah. kind of a kind of a sad day gone. Um, dead. like i i used to love one up i used to love listening to like the one up show uh, or watching the one up show way back in the day when it was a video uh, listening to One Up Yours, listening to uh, GFW Radio, uh, uh, all the other podcasts they did were really awesome. And EGM EGM Live podcast or whatever it was called, like I I, I fell in love with all the people that work there, and uh, it was really cool. It's like a, a really really awesome place for a while, and then um, it, they kind of sold to someone else, and and a lot of people lost their jobs, and they went to other things and started their own podcasts in different areas, but. Nothing really had the same kind of like feel. Like I can remember back to the old One Up Yours podcast where you had Garnett talking with Shane and uh, and Luke. Uh, you and should check it out because uh, <clears throat> they they released a uh, an episode of the uh, of the the main One Up podcast. I don't remember what it's called now, but it was called mm-hmm. One Up Yours. It was called yeah. I listened oh, Games, to that. Damn it, that's what it was called last. Right. Games, damn it. They released a final episode of that called Closure, and it has all these people stretching all the way back to the beginning of One Up on it. They all come in in shifts. Uh, does it does it have Garnet and and Shane and mm-hmm. and all those people? Really? Yeah. Because uh, I listened yeah. to the start, and it didn't have any of those people in it. It. I don't. I don't know if Shane shows up on there, but uh, I'm pretty sure Garnet does at one point. Hmm, cool. It's a long podcast, like three hours long. I will have to. Uh, I'll have to listen to more of it. I listened to like the first 15 minutes, and then kind of just saved it for uh, for later listening. So. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I guess what we're trying to say is um, One Up is kind of dead, and it's I don't know, pour one out for uh, for your fellow fellow game uh, lovers. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people lost their their job with this. A lot of people moved on to other um, kind of journalistic things, but a lot of people did lose their job, which is always terrible to see. And my favorite <laughs> podcast on there was Retronauts, mm-hmm. and this was the one that was all about retro gaming. And um, they started a Kickstarter. The three guys who are most known for that are Jeremy Parrish, uh, Ray Barnhold, and uh, probably Bob Mackey. He's been Bob Mackey's been hosting the show for the past couple of years. Um, they they set up a Kickstarter to support creating new shows, new Retronaut shows. So they're going to buy their own equipment, rent their own studio space, and all that stuff. And um, they asked for fifteen thousand dollars, which they figured was about double what they needed. And they were accounting for taxes and stuff, which is sure. like forty five percent or something like that, apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're up over sixty thousand <clears> now, so they keep putting in stretch goals with new features, and uh, it's a it's a total success. I supported that Kickstarter too, and um, crazy. You know, I just want to suggest to anybody who really loved Retronauts, you can go in there and throw a few bucks at it and make the thing bigger and bigger. And uh, it's very exciting to see it. Yeah, I see. I see Kickstarters like this, and it's like crap. I should do a Kickstarter and then quit my job and do this full time. Um, But I don't have the uh, internet celebrity as these people do. Mm. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, It's good to see this one kind of live on uh, because I did listen to this one from time to time um, when they weren't um, covering the same games over and over and over. I I would skip some episodes, but uh, (laughs) but yeah, it's uh, it's great. So yeah, do check that one out. I'll post a link to the uh, Kickstarter in the show notes as well. All right, moving on. Uh, we had a little bit of a scoop uh, release this week. Uh, it's been a weird week. Uh, I guess a weird couple weeks. You had uh, um, the uh, uh, Lucas Arts uh, Studios were shut down. You had some people oh, yeah. leak some info on games that were being done there. Um, and just this week, um, Polygon leaked um, the existence of a first-person Mega Man, first-person shooter Mega Man game. So similar to. Um, say a Metroid um, 
on the on the Nintendo Wii or the GameCube, where you're basically running around in Metroid Prime, shooting things in the face. Um, they had worked on a game, uh, but using kind of like the Mega Man world. So you had you had a gun, and you would gain other powers by killing other bosses. Um, pretty interesting. I read most of the article that was up on Polygon and saw some other things about it, but. Uh, Pretty cool. I, I'm really kind of disappointed that this didn't make it because I, I love Mega Man. I love all the old Mega Man games, like even like Mega Man Adventure on like the N64, which was horrible. Um, this is Maverick Hunter. So this is like the X Mega Man X series. Yeah, I, I, I love all of all of that, that stuff, like as as hard and kick you in the ass difficult they are. Um, I, I enjoyed the games and it yeah, was it was cool to see kind of this other take um being worked on um i i don't really like the uh, the look of the armor um so much but um everything else just just i don't know kind of kind of screamed at me as something that i would want to get out there and play and and what's amazing to me is they have what like five or six reasonably lengthy videos of the game being played yeah. Yeah. on polygon yeah. and it looks like a finished game yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is astonishing to me that the game got this far through development without anybody making an announcement or saying anything and i mean this is you remember when you know son is talking about in this chat in the chat room Mega Man legends for 3ds being uh, canceled i think that was supposed to be Mega Man legends 3 right yep um that game wasn't even started <clears throat> it wasn't even green lighted to be produced and everybody was talking about it and then this game maverick hunter in 2010 was being developed by Armature, you know, and and I don't I don't believe you mentioned that, but Armature is that's the right. yeah, that's the Metroid Prime team. That's the the creative yeah. people from Metroid Prime, um, which makes it worse. Just yeah. the fact that they're they're touching it. Yeah, it's it's going to make it so much so much the better, right? And yep. uh, this was this probably would have been a great game. This it probably would have been. been a really great game. Um, maybe they would have changed the design of the character. I mean, he looked like a robot Cobra Commander. Or somebody made the joke that he looks like Pepsi Man. Yeah, um, it was really funny. Like, yeah. oh, we we leaked the box art, and then and you link to this was on Twitter, and you click the link, and it's Pepsi Man. I thought that was really funny. <laughs> That's funny. But, uh, um, so yeah, so I guess the game good. it looks really good, but the the game was unfortunately canceled. Not to say that it can't come back, uh, but I guess it's uh, when Inafune left. Um, basically just quit uh, Capcom canceled everything to do with Mega Man and I guess this was one of the one of one of the the unfortunate um, things the article to die along words with it. it oddly they say this was canceled before he left Capcom hmm. so I don't I don't know if it maybe was, it was the last straw that would, yeah. that would make it even better uh, article uh, if that actually comes oh, out sure. to be like sure. yeah I, I, I was a big champion about this game and they canceled it and then I just said screw you guys I'm taking my ball and going home yeah, and and the article does say that it was <clears throat> it had his blessing. Hmm. Yeah, I was really bummed that Mega Man, um, the the one with the weird body parts. What was that called again? Um, Mega Man uh, Legends. No, um, the one where it was kind of like a the the re in, the re um, envisioned two uh, D platformer, but you could find different body parts in the world that you're playing. And um, oh, I can't remember the name of it. Is that Battle Network? Uh, no, no, it was, it was kind of, uh, they were showing it off on, on newer, um, newer consoles and things where you'd find like a Ryu body and you'd have like a Ryu head or something. Um, ah, doesn't matter. Doesn't oh, matter. Mega Man Universe. That's the one. I was really oh. bummed when that one was canceled as horrible as it probably was going to be when it actually shipped. <laughs> um, I, I kind of looked forward to kind of finding all the different things that were in the world and playing around with that. So I really like Mega Man. I, I, I really wish yeah, that they would do more with it that's not like Mega Man 9 and Mega Man 10, um, as fun as they were. Um, I'd like to see some some re-envisioning of, of what the, the franchise could possibly be. Yep. Cool. Um, so moving on, uh, we got uh, a little blue flashy light on your uh, Nintendo 3DS uh, today. And that was uh, basically news that uh, Swap Note has been updated. So Nintendo pushed out an update to the Swap Note app. So you can go to the Nintendo eShop on your 3DS or 3DS XL. You can download the app update. And uh, yeah, you, you get a newer version of Swap Note, which adds a bunch of really cool features. Um, 
Some of the biggest ones we were chatting before the show, Stephen, are the ability to take photos while in the app and include them right on your swap note without having to go to your SD card. So you don't have to plan them out and you can just kind of do off the cuff like, oh, my cat's doing something stupid. I'm going to take a picture and swap note it to all my friends, um, which is kind of neat. Um, what's another big one that, that what's another big thing that it to add, Stephen, that, that you're a fan of? Uh, you mentioned the colors, that the ability to put different colors on different pages. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, you can have different color pens on e- each individual page, and there's some other ones as well. It's um, it's it's pretty cool. Um, I'm I'm I used to use SwapNote a lot to send notes back and forth, um, and I sent out like, ah, oh, we're doing a live show. This is, come come join it. And then other podcasters that I follow on SwapNote ended up doing that for every single episode that they release, and I was like, oh, that's a horrible thing. Why did I start that? Um, and I found my <laughs> SwapNote usage would kind of plummeted after that. So. Um, I mean, maybe this will get me back into it, um, drawing some really cool stuff and sending it to people. So, um, if you have a 3ds, you might as well go check it out. Moving on. Um, we already talked about, uh, Rayman legends, uh, the Wii U title that was supposed to come out in March, um, got canceled. Well, it didn't got canceled. It didn't get canceled. The release got canceled. The game got pushed forward. And Ubisoft was going to basically say that, well, we don't want to release it on one um, very small market. We want to release it so everybody can play it because we love everybody. And we don't like we don't like games that are exclusive to one platform, except for all the games we make that are exclusive to one platform. Uh, But don't 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 uh, don't look at that. Uh, Just ignore (laughs) that fact. Um, But they said that they're going to be pushing Rayman Legends to later this year in September. We all cried a single tear and we're very sad for a little while. Um, The developers came out and said that because of the because 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 of how close this was, we're going to be coming out with a new demo um, in late April, and that is still coming. They they uh, they basically repeated it that it is going to be coming, so it's going to be a new demo with a challenge mode. It will be coming on the Wii U, which is pretty cool. Um, but we got some other news this week um, from the official Nintendo magazine in the UK that uh, the fact that they've been able to spend more time working on the game as they're working on the port is they've already added in 30 new levels to the game. They've added in boss fights. Um, they've polished other levels that already existed, made things tighter, made things better. So I don't know, maybe it's not such a bad thing that it was delayed and and pushed back to September. Um, although I'd love to be playing it right now on my Wii U. Um, I don't know, maybe waiting to September isn't such a bad thing. It'd be nice to be playing just about anything on Wii U right now. <clears throat> yeah, like I, I booted it up to play Lego, and that's it. And that is really kind of sad. Really, really kind of sad. Not that the game was bad, just that there isn't anything else. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, check it out. When it comes out in September, we'll definitely be uh, talking about it. I know I will. Uh, I, Steven, you're going to be picking it up as well, I'm, I'm assuming? Uh, I'm undecided. You're undecided. I had a pre-order in when it was coming out in March, and... Uh, I was pretty angry when they uh, when they postponed it without any reasonably good reason. Um, I'll wait and I'll see what the reviews are like. And uh, yeah, uh, funny funny discussion in the chat room. Um, I'll wait and see what the reviews look like, and then I'll probably wait to see if uh, if it has a deal on Amazon because that's what sure. happened with uh, Rayman <laughs> Origins. Um, mm-hmm. And it's also, it'll be interesting to see what is the best version. Um, It was designed with the Wii U in mind, and it was originally said, this is a game that will only ever exist on the Wii U because we're using all this awesome functionality of the gamepad. And then it's like, oh, by the way, we're porting to everything else, by the way. Um, So who knows if the Wii U is even going to be the biggest, best version anymore. Maybe the PS4 version will be the the one you can actually see the individual uh, drops of sweat running down Rayman's face as he runs through these levels. Like, who knows what's going to happen? But <laughs> Rayman sweat. That's what we need. Yeah, that's that's what we're missing. I mean, that's flying that's what off his disembodied head. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. Dripping and between want, his uh, head and his and one of his gloves. I want to be able to color swap it too. So, we, like the gray sweat, we can turn it red. So it looks like he's bleeding. <laughs> that would be great. It'll uh, be like the Genesis uh, blood yeah. coat. <laughs> that's awesome all right moving on um we've talked about shovel knight a little bit in the past i just want to let everybody know that hasn't already backed it it closes in 47 hours so probably by the time you read uh, get this episode in your in your ear holes um through your your podcast downloading stuff uh it might have already been backed um because that's like two days away um but there's probably going to be other ways that you can um, can can back it before it ships. Um, they've blown by their seventy five thousand um, dollar amount that they wanted. They're as of right now, 
Uh, they're at 247,000. Um, they've added a whole pile of stretch goals. They beat all the stretch goals. They've added more stretch goals. They're almost through all the new stretch goals that they've added. So uh, this game is very popular. It's getting a lot of press everywhere. I saw um, some gameplay stuff done up on like Kotaku and Joystick and a lot of other websites as well. They're getting interviews on different Nintendo um uh, websites because it is coming on the Wii U and the 3DS as well as well as PC. Um, I cannot wait for this game. It looks so so good. So uh, I just wanted to make them make the mention here in the show that if you haven't backed it yet, you might want to go to their Kickstarter quickly to do it. Uh, otherwise, if it's already closed, you might be able to go to their website and and pre buy some of the stuff through uh, PayPal or just wait until it ships and you can always buy it then. But uh, they've done some really cool things. They've had uh, live interviews. They've had live artwork being done they've they've been live streaming like a bunch of times so uh, i i cannot get behind this game any more than i already am it, it's going to be amazing even if the game isn't uh, awesome uh, although by all by all uh, looks at, at at what's come out and what people have been said uh, been saying it, it looks like it is going to be awesome um I, it's still going to be great just just for the kind of retro feel the all the stuff the developers are putting in, you, you know, they love the design. They love the the genre. They love like NES, old NES games. Um, I mean, they came from way forward. So they, they love that type of retro -y kind of awesomeness. So um, can't wait for this game. So uh, do check it out if you haven't already. Just go to Kickstarter and do a search for Shovel Knight or actually go to VG Podcast. Go to the show notes for episode 43, Nintendo Pulse. And I'll put the link there. You don't even have to think. You just click. And that's much easier than thinking, I say. <laughs> That's what I've found as well. Exactly. All right, moving on. Um, I, I'm including a couple little stories. I'm going to put this one that's next right at the end. Um, but let's talk about a, a, an interesting um, announcement that came out this week. Um, there's a new Batman Origins. Uh, Batman, uh, sorry, an Arkham City game. Uh, Batman Arkham Origins is going to be coming out. It's going to be multi-platform, Wii U, uh, PlayStation 3, and Xbox 360. So that's going to be cool. It's kind of a, I don't know, a, a, a re-envisioned origin story for what uh, Arkham City is. So um, not too much has been released about it, um, but it looks pretty cool. But at the like tail end of this announcement... Um, Something that is even more cool was announced, and that is, or at least to me, um, I don't know what your feelings are, Stephen, but to me, um, Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate was announced, and yeah. this makes me all sorts of happy in all sorts of places. Um, this is going to be a 3DS title that is going to be uh, kind of a, a 2.5D uh, like action adventure game, but it's going to be a, a Metroidvania type game so similar to like my uh, guacamole that i that i talked about earlier in the show you're going to be batman sneaking through levels acquiring power-ups acquiring abilities getting to other areas um i'm going to post a link to a um a post over on tiny cartridge that actually shows some screenshots from game informer magazine and it looks really really good um it, it looks like that it looks like um Shadow Complex did on the Xbox 360, which was a similar similar game. Um, people in oh. the chat room want the link, so I'll post it in the chat room as well. Um, it looks really really good. Um, it's basically going to be um, it's going to be like Batman Origins, but kind of like done in 2D. I mean, what what else what else do you want from it? It's going to be awesome, and it looks and great it's too. Being developed by Armature. And that's the other big thing. It's being developed yeah. by Armature, which is just like, oh, I will buy three copies. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, they're saying this I, game. I only need one. <laughs> well, you're not going to start a collection of of uh, Batman uh, games. And, <laughs> Batman and box, games made box by copy. Armature. Yeah, it'll be a small collection, but uh, it'll be great. Um, they're saying that this game takes place at the end of, of Origins. It's going to be um, on the isolated island at the Blackgate Penitentiary. Uh, an uprising has happened in the prison. Our prison. <laughs> I can't talk today. This is terrible. Um, it's gonna have. Uh, it's gonna be two D animated, but full voices um, for kind of like the animatics between sections, which will be really cool. Um, it, there, there is lots of awesome. Um, there was a. I guess quotes that were done on uh, Go Nintendo is a bunch of quotes. So there's a checkpoint system. There's no save room, so it's not like old uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night where you have to find the uh, the coffin to get into. Uh, none of that stuff happens. Um, it, it just looks so good. This is what I want from a game. I, I love Metroidvanias, and I really love 
this. So I, I can't wait to uh, I can't wait to play it. So we'll uh, definitely be chatting more about this one as uh, as the months roll on. Stephen, you're you're uh, you're interested in it as well. You're you're pretty hyped definitely. for it. Yeah, definitely. I, I know you're a big fan. Yeah, of I like to uh, I like to uh, Arkham Asylum, and um, I was disappointed in Arkham City. I got impassably stuck on the Rachel Ghoul glider <clears throat> test thing and uh, stopped playing because that part was terrible, terrible, terrible. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, but uh, yeah, but I'm willing to give one another try. And this isn't um, none of these are being developed by uh, Rocksteady, right? Uh, the the console releases are being developed internally at uh, Warner Brothers Interactive Studios, right? Yeah, which cool. scares me, uh, to yeah. be honest with you. I guess they're using all the tech, mm -hmm. they're using all the engines and all the assets from you know that Rocksteady was using in order to keep it looking consistent. But uh, mm -hmm. who knows what the gameplay is going to be like? Exactly. Cool. Moving on, we got a couple quick hits before we close out this episode. Um, there was a, a leaked, uh, or I guess not a leak. There was a uh, a posting over on GameSpot, GameStop rather, uh, done early, and that was um, the fact that Game and Wario, uh, an announced title for the Nintendo Wii U that doesn't have a ship date yet, will only be forty dollars down from the sixty dollars it originally was priced at. I thought and that not was down to the twenty dollars where it should be. Exactly. I found that kind of interesting because when I when I saw the first um, leaked um, pricing for. Wii U titles and this uh, Game and Wario was on the list at full like sixty dollars. I was like, "What the hell? Are you kidding me?" Um, and then now that it's listed at forty, it might actually be a game that I'll pick up. Um, but like you said, Stephen, if it's twenty, it'll be an insta buy for me. Uh, it's a yeah, fun party that's game. That's a fair price for a WarioWare game. It's for for a game that's made out of like a whole bunch of thirty second bits of enjoyment. Twenty dollars, yeah, that sounds like a good price. Mm -hmm. Definitely does. So, uh, people that were pre-ordering it or getting ready for this one, it might be a lot cheaper than than you thought, which is always a good thing. Cheaper is better. Just um, like Lego, uh, Lego City. Maybe they won't have to refund uh, part, part of the purchase <laughs> price if they decide on a price ahead of time. Yeah, that's it's exactly true. Um, speaking of Lego, uh, how would you like to play Lego Batman Two DC Superheroes? It's a new game. Did didn't you know that this is a new game coming out, Stephen? Uh, yeah, sounds uh, <laughs> like a game I don't care about. It sounds like a game that's already released on other consoles. Um, they yeah. they're, they sent out a press release that this game was coming to the Wii U, and it's coming out in May, and it's like, yeah, who cares? Uh, I, I'm looking at Lego Batman 2 on my shelf right here that I could play right now. Um, Didn't it come out years ago? Um, I don't think years. Ugh. But yeah, I have the 3DS version like right here that I could play right now. Um, Lego Batman 2, DC Superheroes. <laughs> it's so, real. He has a picture. It's like, why Why am I so hyped about that? Why did they send out a press release announcing that this game is coming out in May, on May 21st? I, it just uh, struck me as crazy. I don't know. I, these things really bug me when they... <laughs> spoilers. Sorry. Sorry, Jake Hargreaves. Um, <laughs> it stars Batman. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll cover up the Joker and Robin. Oh, I'm telling you oh, all the stop. names. I'm, co I'm covering them, but I'm saying their names. That's just that's worse. Oh, sorry, guys. Um, so, yeah. yeah. It came out last year, and now they're putting big hype behind the fact that it is coming to the Wii U. Oh, like Mass Effect 3. <sighs> yeah, just like... Oh, oh Arkham Wii U. City. We Arkham City. <laughs> that dropped. Finally. It was, it was on uh, Amazon Gold Box for twenty dollars, um, which is kind of funny as well because you could buy the other console versions for that price. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, the Wii U is getting <laughs> such a, a short end of the stick. Chance it, it's it's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. I, I wish the Wii U got some good news for once. Um, unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case. Anyway, how, how about some potential good news? There's a, a rumor circulating okay. that you're going to be interested in, um, uh, Stephen. Uh, this mm -hmm. is posted over at uh, pocketgamer.co.uk. And there's a rumor that Namco Bandai um, is thinking about releasing Nino Kuni for the Nintendo 3DS. So Nino Kuni came out recently on the PlayStation 3. Awesome awesome game i've played the hell out of it i love it it's an action rpg um set in in the world of like studio ghibli it's so awesome played it love it um but now they're talking uh, about the, the the potential of it coming to 3ds and that's making me happy as well because i want to play it <laughs> as well um this game when nino kuni first shipped in japan it came out as a ds version as well um, so what they're saying is that they could um, just basically port the uh, DS version 
um, and add the um, kind of the translations and, and all the localization that they did for North America into that version and then just kind of up res it a little bit and make it run on the 3DS. So I, I hope this is more than a rumor. I hope this is a um, let's leak a bit of a story and see what kind of the, the public's uh, reception to it is because I will buy this one even though I already own the, the yeah. PlayStation 3 version. I think this is a game that, uh, like when I first started playing Nino Kuni, the first thing I said is this is a game that deserves to be on a Nintendo platform. It is so Nintendo in every aspect from its storytelling to its its uh, saccharine nature <laughs> to its mm-hmm. its look and feel. It, it feels very Nintendo. And it was I was playing on my PlayStation 3, which wasn't bad, but I'd like to play it on a Nintendo device if I could. Yeah, and and that's another one is Guacamelee. I yeah. really don't quite understand why that's a PlayStation exclusive. I guess they must have funded it or something. But yeah, uh, PlayStation with all the obvious Nintendo love in that game, they oh, really yeah should be on a Nintendo platform. Totally. There's like Zelda posters. There's Mario posters. There's Mega Man posters. There's everything. Um, when you defeat the first boss, you actually run through this room and you see this glowing gold axe. And you touch it, and then the floor peels away as this big beast falls into the lava below. It's like, it, it's so much a, a, a love letter to Nintendo. It's it it just makes me makes me very very happy. So, um, yeah, I I really hope this game does come to Nintendo, and if it does, I will be gushing about it some more when I play it on my Nintendo 3DS. I can't wait. All right, last but not least, um, this is a story that I'm I'm putting it in here not because of what the story is but what it kind of signifies i guess um disney interactive uh, announced this week that they are going to be bringing planes which is the new sequel to cars but they're going to be coming out with a game um on the nintendo wii u the nintendo wii and the 3ds and the ds as well so they're they're porting they're making a a movie tie-in game blah 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 they do this with all their movies um but for me, with uh, Disney kind of closing the the Luke, I can't see what your what's on your screen. Oh, Finding Nemo. There you go. Yeah, they do it with every single movie. There's a DS title for it. Um, yep. I, I was not really worried. I guess I was a little bit worried because I got young kids and they like playing all these like Disney games for some strange reason. They're horrible to me, but they're young and they don't know better. So they they play these Disney games, and I, I was kind of worried with the the shuttering of like Lucas Arts that. Disney was going to basically get out of the games business and maybe start farming all this stuff out to third-party companies. Um, I guess not. I guess that means that Disney Interactive, as of right now, is safe and they're still going to be releasing their games. Um, it makes me wonder if they're going to start releasing Star Wars games themselves. So it'll be Disney Interactive that will release the Star Wars stuff, kind of take all of their um, their possible... Oh, yeah, a foreman in the chat room saying Disney Infinity as well. They've already yeah. announced that, so I don't, wouldn't think that they would cancel it. But... Um, it just makes me wonder if they're going to take all of their potential game development studios and kind of mash them all together into one into one big happy family. Disney is so crazy <laughs> right now with all the properties that they own. Um, they kind of rule the world right now as far as geek culture is. Like they they own all the properties. They've got Star Wars and the Muppets. Yeah, they got Star Wars, the Muppets, and everything there's to no do with more Marvel. Things there's there's left m- after that. Marvel. They they own everything Marvel like too. like yeah. all the geek stuff they they own it so um, they don't own Nintendo yet but that's time. true they give them time they'll buy Nintendo and then they'll buy everything else they they will be the they'll be the corporation that is in Wally that is basically making us drive around in fat chairs drinking um drinking like cupcakes out of a straw in a in squishy form so. Um, but yeah, so Disney is still making games. Anybody that was scared, um, probably no one out there is scared because their games are usually pretty horrible. Uh, except for Toy Story 3 was pretty good. I had a lot of fun playing that with my kids. So they're, they're still making games. So it's kind of a non-story, but it is kind of cool because it means that maybe Star Wars games will not be canceled after all. Maybe another studio will be working on them and they won't just be farmed out to whoever has the most money that wants to ruin the, the It's kind of like if the they, you know, maybe they could have a Star Wars game made by BioWare someday yeah That'd i mean that interesting would interesting if they did that or that would be cool or factor five yeah that would be uh, or armature or, or, or armature <laughs> yeah. i'm going through the process of naming all the other developers who made star wars games that were really good oh, but yes. uh yes you, you came up with another good one yeah so yeah um look forward to that i guess if you like movie 
tie-in games, which are really horrible. I started playing the Iron Man 2 game on my PlayStation. I picked it up for $5. Man, I feel Why ripped off. Why would you do that to yourself? I feel ripped off for paying $5 for this game. I feel really, really bad. It's not even a game that my kids can play because it's so convoluted in its control scheme. I just want to kind of burn it and dance around its flaming corpse. It's such a horrible game. <laughs> I hate movie tie-in games. I really, really do. They're usually pretty bad. Yeah. Except when they do something like uh, like what they do with Scott Pilgrim. Oh, yeah, that was a great game. That was a really good idea to kind of take the theme and the concept and just kind of run with it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right, man. I think that's going to about do it for this episode. Unless you have anything else to add before we continue on with the outro of the show. I do not. Are we going to use another old, like, you can use an old outro? Um, I don't really have any old outro, outros. Maybe I'll play some old... Um, music. Let's do this one. Play some Ocarina of Time music in the background. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for for subscribing and staying uh, subscribed to the podcast. Um, I, I love all the feedback you're sending in. I'm getting a lot of emails. I'm getting a lot of tweets. Um, if you want to follow us on Twitter, I am uh, at Dasme on Twitter. D A S M E. Stephen is at Stephen J Munn. Correct. I'm waiting for a yes. nod. Yes. On Twitter. Follow us. Talk with us. We want to hear from you. Uh, but there's other ways you can do it as well. You can head, o- head on over to vgpodcast.com and click contact us at the top of the page. Uh, or you can email us directly at vgpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, we have a forum uh, that a lot of people are posting in, which is a lot of fun. And we do a voicemail line, which people aren't calling and leaving voicemails on. But please do. I'd love to play your, your voices in future episodes of the show. So uh, you can do that by calling 505-VG-PODCASTS, uh, which is 505-847-6322. Uh, there's many ways to make free long-distance phone calls these days. It's a U.S. number, so you can probably do it right from your home line, depending on your, your calling plan. Um, but there's things like the Facebook app or Gmail. You just t- punch in the numbers, leave a message, and we'll play it in future episodes of the show. So it'll be fun for everybody involved, I promise. All right, Steven. Oh, the music ended quick. This one was so short. Oh. I'll start something else. I'll put Donkey Kong on. There we go. All right, Stephen, thanks again for, for joining me for yet another episode of the Nintendo Pulse. Good to be here. Thanks, everybody, for staying subscribed, and we'll talk to you in a week's time. Take it easy, everybody. <laughs>